that Congress is a vast opportunity for learning and a great venue to challenge traditional thinking. This is precisely what we need today in a world rudely awakened to alarming environmental and social realities that can no longer be ignored or accepted. These are brutal realities that threaten our collective future. We've all seen the devastating impact of climate change. Whichever part of the world you're from, the outcomes are one and the same. Countless lives lost, human displacement, livelihoods and businesses disrupted, agricultural resources obliterated, and the tragic loss of hope for so many. These devastating environmental problems can no longer pass as acts of God. We are witnessing the direct consequences of a human footprint that is so large that it is degrading nature on a massive scale. We are consuming more goods, using more resources, and creating more garbage that, than we are equipped to handle. Technology has allowed us to push the limits even further, but has resulted in more emissions that warm the atmosphere. Companies are pressured to grow faster, produce more goods, increase profits, expanding environmental footprints in the process. These are all reinforced by the promised rewards of a capitalist system under which much of the world operates. Ironically, it is the same system that created great wealth for nations and improved the well-being of societies. Capitalism, after all, has been the most positive force in uplifting the human condition. History has proven it is the single greatest engine for the creation of wealth. Countries which adopted it, like China, have sustained economic growth for years and spread prosperity. But along with this, it also finds itself surrounded by environmental ruin and persistent poverty that afflicts a great part of its population. While it is true that capitalism has allowed many countries to climb out of poverty, many have not. A great percentage of the world's population is caught in a poverty trap, which climate change will only worsen. Certainly, there is a host of complex reasons why millions are stuck in poverty. Population explosion is one of them. But it is also clear that inherent failings of our current economic system have aggravated it. While capitalism has been a great economic model, it has not been efficient in providing goods and services to people who need them most. It has failed to provide basic infrastructure needed to allow the poorer sectors of society to join the formal economy. Poverty alleviation approaches have relied heavily on charity through multilateral aid or donations of rich countries to poor countries. There has been a dependence on government for the provision of basic goods and services to the poor. This model does not work sustainably. The charity system has tremendous inefficiencies that leaves it grossly insufficient. The US, for example, has given billions of dollars to Africa. But according to Jeffrey Sachs of Harvard University, the true developmental aid net of the portion for US consultants for food and other emergency aid amounts to a grand total of six cents per African, hardly enough to make a difference. Charity has not been able to deliver long-term solutions on a scale that can genuinely uplift the lives of the poor. Businesses, in turn, have traditionally prioritized more developed segments of society, which tend to be more profitable. This further isolates the majority and leaves them entrenched in a vicious cycle of poverty. 
from a moral standpoint, and even as a businessman, it is unacceptable. Business simply cannot flourish in failing societies. The building blocks of society, families, communities, and businesses cannot prosper if the air is polluted, if the rivers are clogged, if forests are denuded, if biodiversity is threatened, and if people are mired in poverty. These realities must force all of us to stop and rethink the very conduct of our lives, the way we govern and the way we do business. Let me emphasize that the problem is not capitalism per se, but in the self-interested way that it is practiced today. It is capitalism that is highly individualistic, that is motivated by purely personal gain at any cost, and in many cases, with none or very little regard for anything else. This, I believe, can be as destructive as it is creative. Instead, we need to fundamentally reorient this economic paradigm towards a more responsible and enlightened form of capitalism, one that seeks long-term sustainability and balance, one that uses the mechanisms of the free market, but recognizes the needs of the broader community. If we don't, I'm afraid we will continue on a path that leads to more frequent natural disasters and the resulting toll on human suffering and poverty. I have confidence that practical and realistic solutions do exist and are within reach. Today, I see three very important trends combining to form the foundation of a new, more enlightened capitalism, or what Bill Gates calls creative or soft capitalism. This is capitalism that uses market forces to address the needs of the poor, those at the base of the economic pyramid, who in the past were not considered a profitable market. This is capitalism that looks at greening the supply chain, that minimizes economic environmental footprint, that seeks more efficient use of natural resources and replaces those it has used. I see many people and companies beginning to transform, ready to embrace an alternative path that leads to sustainable, more inclusive, and equitable growth. The first trend I see is an emerging social pact. People are increasingly demanding greater accountability, higher level of ethics, heightened social and environmental responsibility, and governance from both the public and private sectors. Consumers are demanding products that are environmentally safe. Employees are more inclined to pursue careers with companies that are ethically and socially responsible. Capital is finding its way into companies that have strong social and environmental dimensions in their business strategies. It is imperative that this momentum is nurtured and reinforced so that it is adopted at all levels. The second trend is the increasing ability of business using new business models new technologies, and partnerships with communities and government to profitably meet the needs of the lower income groups. By finding groundbreaking ways to tap this market profitably, companies are unlocking new opportunities and unleashing billions of dollars as they provide access to services and goods for the poor. There are many examples of successful business models that cater to the base of the economic pyramid or the poorest sectors of our society.